praise to the Most High, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Akak, Wadash, and double honors to the apostles and elders. Great millstone, shalom to the hope of the elect. It's your brother, Atazawan Bayaf. And I'm going to do a quick lesson, um, as various other brothers have done on this devil here, uh, Jacob Rothschild, all right, who passed away, all right, uh, yesterday. And for those out there who may not know much about that family, you know, these are the banking elite uh, family, okay, along with, you know, uh, the Rockefeller, the Rockefeller Foundation, um, and so forth, okay. These are some big devils who are behind the scenes, all right, and control the wealth of the earth, believe it or not, all right. So anyway, we'll read a little bit about this guy, and then I'm going to, I'm not going to talk during this particular video, because I'm going to post some, some scriptures, and then we'll have a, another video that another brother posted, in which I was going to do a extensive lesson on it, but there's no need to reinvent the wheel, right? Because the brother, um, GMS ISAL 144, had put up a, about a 20-minute video um, concerning this entire family and their background, okay? So there's no need for me to go through all that. You can watch the video and listen and watch, uh, you know, what this, what this particular family is all about, all right? Now here we, we see it says, Jacob Rothschild, fourth bearing Rothschild, okay? So there were several brothers, okay, uh, initially, from, I don't know, 100 years or so ago to began to go out into the face of the world and set up all these different banking institutions in which they're the financiers of all the wars that you have seen and read about, okay? Uh, they funded both sides, okay, and, and, and raked in all the money, okay? With that being said, if you don't know much about them, you can go ahead and read, read up on them, okay? But this particular... Uh, man right here, uh, I believe, I think he had a brother last year that died, Evelyn Rothschild or something like that, okay, it may have been a year before that, maybe a couple years ago, but either way, you know, this is a family of nothing but devils, you know, and I personally, once I heard this dude speak with his very, uh, I don't know, he had a very deep tone real heavy, heavy voice. I said he must be Esau back in the flesh. <laughs> That's how I saw him. But anyway, uh, we'll read this just a little bit. It, what, born in 1936, okay, in, in the UK, all right? He was 87 years old when he passed, and then he gives you his children, grandchildren, and siblings, and so on. Let me see if... Uh, He had more siblings. Let's see if it'll open up. Okay, it doesn't. Watch it. We go back. But we wanted. What I wanted to do was take a quick look at this word "baron." Okay, for those who may not know what a baron is, typically they're the ones who are the head of a particular business, right, or run an industry. And here it says, a, a first definition, a member of the lowest order of the British nobility. The term, quote unquote, baron is not used as a form of address in Britain. Barons usually being referred to as, quote unquote, Lord, right? So that was his name, Lord, quote unquote, right? Jacob Rothschild, Okay which he was nothing but the highest level devil at the time, okay? So with that, um, we'll get into it. I'm going to post a few scriptures, and then we'll get into the video, and then I'll post a couple of scriptures after that. And, uh, you know, you can take the information in, and like I said, if you're curious about them, you can go on and, 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 and read up on them. But uh, when we oftentimes speak of the elite banking families. This is what this is and who we refer to, okay, in most cases. All right, so 
stay tuned for the scriptures and uh, the video. All right. And with that, I give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, by Shem Yahushai, by Shem Yukach All right. And shalom to the hope of the elect. All right. Stay tuned. Richest families in the world, this is the Rothschilds. At one point, the Rothschild family possessed the largest private fortune, even financing full armies with their wealth. It all started with five brothers born into a banking family. Their father sent each of them to different major cities to expand the business, and they executed on that perfectly. All five brothers became immensely wealthy and created a massive family fortune. The family used that money to buy property across the globe and expand the business even further. You know what I mean? But listen, I don't expect anybody who put me in prison, if, you, and in the least, if someone puts me in here, and the more um, polite I am to them and the kindness, the more I lay back, that's not going to make them take their foot off their neck. It's going to make you want to crush them more. If you're in a fight with somebody and you hurt them, the objective of the fight is not to back off and let them recoup. The, the objective is to smash into oblivion. But the law says if you made a mistake, you were sinned. Whose law said that? The law of the United States? Yeah. Well, who controls the law of the United States? Legislatures. Yeah, Supreme legislatures Court. that have their whole own agenda. Laws mean nothing. You give me the currency of a country and you can, have all, you can make all the rules in the world. And that's all that matters. Who's in control? So then... Farms are not for burning. They're for tattoos. So, you know, you sicken me. Mr. Smithers, I don't think I've ever seen you without Mr. Burns. Oh, uh, Mr. Burns is more comfortable at home reading his copies of the scriptures. Blessed be the poor? I'm just finding this out now. No one must know. Exodus. The Rothschild banking dynasty, easily one of the wealthiest families in history, but also the single largest source of conspiracy theories. The vast and shrouded wealth of the Rothschilds has endured for generations and has unsurprisingly made it hard to tell what is fact and what is fiction. In this video, we're going back to the earliest days of this famous Jewish family to see how they managed to build one of the greatest fortunes in history at a time of rampant anti-Semitism. The question of how and why the United Nations is the crux of the great conspiracy to destroy the sovereignty of the United States and the enslavement of the American people within a UN One World Dictatorship is a complete and unknown mystery to the vast majority of the American people. The reason for this unawareness of the frightening danger to our country and to the entire free world is simple. The masterminds behind this great conspiracy have absolute control of all of our mass communications media, especially television, the radio, the press, and Hollywood. We all know that our State Department, the Pentagon, and the White House have brazenly proclaimed that they have the right and the power to manage the news, to tell us not the truth, but what they want us to believe. They have seized that power on orders from their masters of the great conspiracy. And the objective is to brainwash the people into accepting the phony peace bait 
to transform the United States into an enslaved unit of the United Nations One World Government is that our so-called leaders in Washington, whom we elected to safeguard our nation and our Constitution, are the betrayers, and that behind them are a comparatively small group of men whose sole objective is to enslave the whole world of humanity in their satanic plot of one world government. Now, as a matter of further intelligence, a term used by the FBI, let me clarify the meaning of the expression, he is a liberal. The enemy, meaning the one world conspirators, have seized upon that word liberal as a cover-up for their activities. It sounds so innocent and so humanitarian to be liberal. Well, make sure that the person who calls himself a liberal or is described as a liberal is not in truth a red. Now then, this satanic plot was launched back in the 1760s when it first came into existence under the name of the Illuminati. This Illuminati was organized by one Adam Weishaupt, born a Jew, who was converted to Catholicism and became a Catholic priest. And then, at the behest of the then newly organized House of Rothschild, defected and organized the Illuminati. Naturally, the Rothschilds financed that operation. And every war since then, beginning with the French Revolution, has been promoted by the Illuminati operating under various names and guises. In the United States, they set up what they called the Council on Foreign Relations, commonly referred to as the CFR. And this CFR is actually the Illuminati in the United States. And its hierarchy, the masterminds in control of the CFR, to a very great extent, are the descendants of the original Illuminati conspirators. But to conceal that fact, most of them changed their original family names to American sounding names. For example, the true name of the Dillons, Clarence and Douglas Dillon, once Secretary of the U.S. Treasury Department, is Lepowski. There is a similar establishment of the Illuminati in England, operating under the name of the British Institute of International Affairs. There are similar secret Illuminati organizations in France, Germany, and other nations, operating under different names. But at all times, the operations of these organizations were and are masterminded and controlled by the internationalist bankers who in turn were and are controlled by the Rothschilds. Now, just why did the conspirators choose the word Illuminati for their satanic organization? Weishaupt himself said that the word is derived from Lucifer and means holders of the light. Using the lie that his objective was to bring about a one world government to enable those with mental ability to govern the world and prevent all wars in the future. In short, using the word peace on earth as his bait. Perhaps the most vital directive in Weishaupt's plan was to obtain absolute control of the press so that all news and information could be slanted so that the masses could be convinced that a one world government is the only solution to our many and varied problems. Now do you know who owns and controls our mass communications media? I'll tell you practically all the movie lots in Hollywood is owned by the Laymans, Kuhn Loeb and Company, Goldman Sachs, and other internationalist bankers. All the national radio and TV channels in the nation are owned and controlled by those same internationalist bankers. 
In 1834, the Italian revolutionary leader, Giuseppe Mazzini, was selected by the Illuminati to direct their revolutionary program throughout the world. Mazzini had enticed an American general named Albert Pike into the Illuminati. Pike was fascinated by the idea of a one-world government, and ultimately he became the head of this Luciferian conspiracy. Between 1859 and 1871, he, Pike, worked out a military blueprint for three world wars and various revolutions throughout the world, which he considered would forward the conspiracy to its final stage in the 20th century. Long before Marconi invented radio, the scientists in the Illuminati had found the means for Pike and the heads of his councils to communicate secretly. It was the discovery of that secret that enabled intelligence officers to understand how apparently unrelated incidents, one such as the assassination of an Austrian prince at Sarajevo, took place simultaneously throughout the world, which developed into a war or a revolution. Pike's plan was as simple as it has proved effective. It called for communism, Nazism, political Zionism, and other international movements be organized and used to foment three global world wars and at least two major revolutions. World War III is to be fomented by using the so-called controversies, the agents of the Illuminati, operating under whatever new name, are now stirring up between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Muslim world. That war is to be directed in such a manner that all of Islam and political Zionism, Israel, will destroy each other, while at the same time the remaining nations, once more divided on this issue, will be forced to fight themselves into a state of complete exhaustion, physically, mentally, spiritually, and economically. Now can any thinking person doubt that the intrigue now going on in the near, middle, and far east is designed to accomplish that satanic objective? Pike himself foretold all this in a statement he made to Mazzini on August 15, 1871. Pike stated that after World War III is ended, those who will inspire to undisputed world domination will provoke the greatest social cataclysm the world has ever known. Quoting his own words, taken from the letter he wrote to Mazzini, and which letter is now catalogued in the British Museum in London, England, he said, We shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists, and we shall provoke a great social cataclysm which in all its horror will show clearly to all nations the effect of absolute atheism, the origin of savagery and of most bloody turmoil. Then everywhere, the people forced to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitudes disillusioned with Christianity, whose deistic spirits will be from that moment on without direction and leadership and anxious for an ideal but without knowledge where to send its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer, brought finally out into public view, a manifestation which will result from a general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. Anyway, the ending of the Civil War destroyed, temporarily, all chances of the House of Rothschild to get a clutch on our money system, such as they had acquired in Britain and other nations in Europe. I say temporarily because the Rothschilds and the masterminds of the conspiracy never quit. So they had to start from scratch but they lost no time in getting started. 
Shortly after the Civil War, a young immigrant who called himself Jacob H. Schiff arrived in New York. Jacob was a young man with a mission for the House of Rothschild. Jacob was the son of a rabbi born in one of Rothschild's houses in Frankfurt, Germany. After a comparatively brief training period in the Rothschild's London Bank, Jacob left for America with instructions to buy into a banking house, which was to be the springboard to acquire control of the money system of the United States. Actually, Jacob came here to carry out four specific assignments. Number one, and most important, was to acquire control of America's money system. Number two, find desirable men who, for a price, would be willing to serve as stooges for the great conspiracy and promote them into high places in our federal government, our Congress, in the U.S. Supreme Court, and all federal agencies. Number three, create minority group strife throughout the nations, particularly between whites and blacks. Number four, create a movement to destroy religion in the United States, but Christianity to be the chief target. In the final phases of the conspiracy, the one world government will consist of the king dictator, head of the United Nations, the CFR, and a few billionaires, economists, and scientists who have proved their devotion to the great conspiracy. All others are to be integrated into a vast conglomeration of mongrelized humanity, actually slaves. You were you got thirty percent of the vote. You were having an effect. You 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 made mad as hell. They knew that you'd started the Constitution Party. Yeah. They knew that you were uh, somebody who was taking action and getting things done. You'd already made some big films, had a lot of other successes. Right. So they were trying to recruit you, and, and and didn't it come down to the point of, hey, we are here to recruit you, and don't worry, your chip's going to say, don't mess with us. You know, this guy's uh, don't touch. Yeah. Yes, that did happen. Now, I was definitely being recruited. But it's more subtle than that. Well, your words. Just go through the process, and then, and then what he said. What, well, what it is is, I, remember, we were friends, and we used to have, he used to come to my house a lot. We'd have dinner, we'd talk, and he'd, he'd tell me about business investments. How you get involved in, you know, or they would help me with this business investment or that business investment. And was I interested in joining the Council on Foreign Relations? You know, I would have to get a letter to join them. But was I interested in that? And, uh, you know, just, uh, just stuff, you know, leading you on. And, and uh, I used to say to him that I never really did that because that wasn't where I was coming from. You know, as much as I like you, Nick, you know, your ways and my ways, we're, the, we're on the opposite side of the fence. You know, I don't believe in enslaving people, you know, and... Um, and he would come back with, oh, I do? Or? Well, it would be more like, you it's know... It's better for them. Well, it's more like, you know, um, how do I put it? It was like, what do you care about them? What do you care about those people? What difference does it make to you? Take care of your own life. Do the best you can for you and your family. What do the rest of the people mean to you? They don't mean anything to you. They're just serfs. They're just people. You know, it was, it was just a lack of caring you know and that's just not who I was it was just sort of like cold you know it was just like cold you know and uh, I used to say to him what, what's the point of all this you have all the money in the world you need you have all the power you need what's the point you know what's the end goal and he said the end goal is to get everybody chipped to control the whole society yeah when niggas hear this shit they say it's harsh type of shit that make you want handle a nigga harsh Hostile, aggressive, and kind of harsh. I'm like a rough child with money, that's why I'm harsh. How we dealing with them? Harsh. How we dealing with them? Harsh. How we handling them? Ooh. Yo, when niggas hear this shit, they say it's harsh. Type of shit that make you want handle a nigga harsh. Act hostile, aggressive, and kind of harsh. I'm like a rough child with money.